The AFK exam for February 2021 is cancelled. I know this news is sad and devastating for so many students who have been preparing for this exam for past few months or years. It may be your first, second or third attempt for this exam. So far you have put so much money, so much time and so much effort into this one exam and now it is cancelled for a few more months. I know it's devastating. It is sad. But it is what it is. I have received so many comments and personal messages from you guys to know, okay, if dentistry is so hard of a path right now, what could be my other possible options? In this video, let's try to skip the DDS path. Let's try to skip the entire NDEB process. And let's go back to the basic, basic thought that you and I, everyone had at one point. Should I move to a new country, a new place and start a new life? There could be so many valid reasons why you choose to immigrate. Dentistry is just one of them. If we cannot become a dentist in this new country, it does not stop our life. I have received so many comments and messages in my previous videos to discuss about what are the other possible options. Is there a career change possible? Am I too late to try something? Should I just become dental hygienist or dental assistant because it's way too easy for me? I'm a dentist already. How to immigrate in Canada and settle as an international student or as a person who gets PR directly? There are so many questions which are posted here and I will try to answer all of your questions in this video. Stay with this video because I'll be covering five main questions from the comments that I received. I will try to answer all your questions in this one video in five parts. In first part, I'm going to answer the most common question. If I cannot become a dentist, should I try becoming a dental hygienist or a dental assistant? Which one is easy? Which one will let me become a permanent resident? Or which is good for international students? These two career options are amazing. But again, you should know so much information before you make this kind of decision. I will try to cover all the options including colleges that offer this, these programs, tuition fees, immigration prospects, job prospects, salary ranges. So all this information would be right here in this video after this intro. Welcome back, this is Sam from Teacher Dauntist and I will start with the five parts that I just mentioned but before that you make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, share with a friend who is in the same path as you and you can follow me on Instagram for some fun reels and updates. We all carry this immigration dream when we try to reset our life and start a new one. There could be a million reasons for you to immigrate to a different country and just start a new life. The immigration decision is not easy. It is a very sensitive, very important phase of your life. And I do not want you to get stuck with the thought that if I'm not becoming a dentist, my immigration process will not be fulfilled. Let's start with the first part. Dental hygiene versus dental assistant. What is the best alternate career for a dentist? Breaking news, none of these two. I don't know why as a dentist we try to believe that our skill set is so limited and our knowledge or our education was so shallow that we just cannot do anything else except dentistry. This is, this is not our mistake. We think there is nothing else we can do except being something in dentistry. So the my highlight for this part would be no, these are the last two options that you should look into. I don't know how passionate you are about dentistry, how much you love to do anything remotely related to dentistry. I was not like that. When I moved to this country, I knew I would go to dentistry someday. But meanwhile, I wanted to learn every damn thing that I did not know or learn back in India, which made me look like I'm just a dentist who do not know anything else. Lifelong learning is an amazing quality. Lifelong learning could be the best quality that you can acquire over a certain time. And as a dentist, yes, we should be more open to lifelong learning. I would talk more about your other options in my next part, but in this part, we will only discuss dental assistant versus dental hygiene program. So let's start with dental assistant program. Dental assistant is a great career option. Dental assistants in Canada perform very high quality of work in very pressed time. 
and they are so good at their work that sometimes you will feel shy that oh my god i could never put a rubber dam so well in so little time some of the dental assistants make alginate impressions so precise that i'm like oh i could never do that after 10 years of practicing dentistry becoming a dental assistant is not something that you automatically get after becoming a dentist you might tell everybody hey i was a dentist in my home country i can easily become a dental assistant you won't even last in that clinic for more than two days you would just know right away on day one that you do not have training to perform that task so all those people who are trying to jump into becoming a dental assistant right after landing into canada it might not be a very pleasant experience for you. You might have already realized that you are not so good with the sterilization protocol. You do not know that well, all the softwares and billing systems that are used here. You are not so good with putting rubber dams on. You might not be that great with radiographs, with rubber dam, with alginate impressions and so many other things that are very important for a dentist to perform the treatments efficiently. So a dental assistant plays an incredible role, but from what I have understood so far, they are not uh, paid that well yet. Some of the dental clinics in Mississauga and Brampton area offer dental assistant basic wages around 12 to 15 dollars. In Nova Scotia, I have heard wages from 15 to 25 dollars per hour, which is great, which is good. But again, this is a very physically demanding job. You might not have the authority that you had as a dentist in your home country and there might be a good learning curve for you to learn all these skills. I would highly, highly encourage you to spend those eight to ten thousand dollars and try to get proper education in dental assistance if you are choosing that path. But once again, big question mark, why do you want to be a dental assistant? Is that your dream? Is that a career choice that you were born with? Or is that the reason why you want to move to Canada? If not, stop using that one career options as the only career option possible. Try to look into other domains. If you don't have the skill, go acquire the skill. If you think your education is not enough to get you into another job, how about take some courses? How about put some effort, learn accounting? How about put some effort and learn some basic communication skills which will take you into other programs, other kind of careers. How about go and get some education on it. If you are not ready to get some education in any other field, sorry, you are missing out on becoming a lifelong learner, which is something a dentist should always be. Overall, it is a great career path. There are many, many colleges available throughout the Canada which offer dental assistant program. Three important factors. Number one. If it's a private college, there are many colleges in Mississauga, in Niagara Falls area, some other parts of Ontario, some parts of Alberta and some parts of BC. These are privately owned colleges whose programs may or may not be accredited by the Canadian immigration programs. Now, they are accredited by the provincial body. So yes, if you get into that program, then you will get a license to practice dental assistance in Canada or in that province. As an international student, if you take that program, you might not be eligible to get a postgraduate work permit. That brings me to the next problem, problem number three, that you might not be eligible for provincial nomination programs or any other immigration program. Dental assistant, as a sad news, comes in NOC, National Occupation Category C. This category is not eligible for provincial nomination programs in many other immigration programs. So you might not be successful to become a permanent resident with a dental licensing career. So these are some of the things that you should look into before making a decision. And so if I talk about dental hygiene programs, it is actually a very good career option if you want to settle into that kind of career. If you think that, yes, I would love to just not have so many things in my hand, but I would just love to do some oral prophylaxis, some radiographs, do some consultation, call my dentist, ask them to have a look at my patient again. Maybe there would be some checkup and I would, I would be happy to go back home without any complication Dental hygienists also have to do some local anesthesia. There are also dental hygienists who work specifically into orthodontics, pediatric dentistry or some other specific fields. There is a lot of scope for dental hygiene. The pay scale is great. It starts from $25 to $35 per hour. For dental hygienist program, you may choose to go through a bachelor's of dental hygienist degree program or you can choose a diploma in dental hygiene. It is always either two years or three years program. 
If somebody is offering you less than two years program, run in the opposite direction. There are those private colleges who just want to give out those uh, diplomas to people and not train them enough. Once again, same thing applies to dental hygienist program for international students. Please, please, please make sure that the dental hygiene program you have selected, the college which is offering that program is recognized to grant you a postgraduate work permit. Now, for every two year program that you study in Canada, you get three years of postgraduate work permit. But there is an exception. I can show you on CIC website word to word that the postgraduate work permit may not be may not be eligible for private career colleges on the Canada's immigration, refugee and citizenship website. You might get enough information on which colleges have eligibility, but you might not get lucky to know which colleges are not eligible for PGWP. I personally know two Indian dentists who got into a dental hygiene program in Mississauga. And it turned out after completing two years of that course, they were not eligible for postgraduate work permit. One of them had to go back to their home country, while other one had to take another program for one year just to be eligible for one more year of work permit. Such a waste of your precious time and efforts. So before you make this kind of decision, make sure that you are either going to a publicly funded university for a degree program or you are going for a diploma program in a very well recognized college. If it's a private college, you might see some red flags as soon as you start entering their name and finding out more about postgraduate work permit. Always make sure that you get information in written. Every college have a student service advisor or a recruitment team. You can ask them this question clearly after completing this two years program. Do you think I will be eligible for postgraduate work permit from your program? I have personally called four or five colleges. Two out of them clearly give me this answer that no, you will not be eligible for postgraduate work permit. So you do your own research and make sure you do not fall into any trap. Three important points for both dental assistant and dental hygiene program. Number one, females are still given more preference over male in both careers. Now, my very good friend is a guy, he's from India, Gujarat, and then of course, he's very good dental assistant. His dentists just love him. But while others always complain that guys are not getting jobs and girls are always selected. I teach at community college and I see this ratio very clear. I have seen Dalhousie Dentistry, School of Dental Hygiene, and yes, female ratio is super dominant. So for guys out there, it might be a little tricky getting a good job. That being said, if you are good at your work, if you are good with patience, if you can take care of children very well, and if you have good work ethics, then you know what? You will do great in either of those two careers. Point number two, it does not give you any extra credit towards your DDS program. These two career options do not make your path towards dentistry any easier at all. Either of these two career paths are not going to give you a big support towards your DDS dream. It might be easier for me to clear AFK exam. Sorry, breaking news. That's absolutely incorrect information. Rather, you are slowing down your process towards dentistry by studying something else, but pursuing some other program. Number three. Either of those two programs are not super easy. Don't think that you have a degree in dentistry. You might just sail through these programs and you'll be on top of everything. They are very demanding programs. Dental assistant is a one year program. In one year, they try to teach you everything. So it is quite demanding. While dental hygiene program, it may be from two to three years. And boy, that is a pretty intense program. So don't think that you would just have a gala time if you are into either of these two programs because you have a background in dentistry. So what did we learn in this path? That dental assistant and dental hygiene are great career options only if you really want to do it. We learned what is their average pay scale. We learned how many years does it take to complete the educational program and we learned how good it is for immigration purpose. So all those people who were really worried about what to do if the dentistry exam is cancelled, what are my alternate options? I hope this video was a little bit helpful for you. You got some insight on the alternative career options and dental hygiene and dental assistant questions that are being asked a lot. If you have any other questions, please post it in the comments. I'll try to put them together into one video and share it with you. So there is a fair amount of information available for you before making any big decision of your life.
If this is the first video you are watching, please watch other videos in my channel. I will give you two recommendations right here. And also make sure you subscribe to my channel by clicking this button below and also the bell icon so that you know when my next video is coming up. Make sure you like this video, share with a friend who is in the similar path and leave a comment below. Bye.